Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today, we're going to take a look at this very, very nice and very beautiful Advanced Paris XI-75 Integrated Amplifier. It's a really, really remarkable piece, and uh, I think you're going to find this video interesting. So please sit back and relax, and we're going to talk about the Advanced Paris XI-75. Old guy, hi fi, we tune in. Wisdom lives in every spin. Vintage soundtracks guide the way. Golden moments day by day. Well, the Advanced Paris XI-75 is rapidly becoming one of my favorite pieces of gear. Um, it is remarkable. It is an excellent integrated amplifier. Um, it is beautiful to look at. It is very well constructed. We're going to open it up and look inside. We're also going to look at the back. You'll see how flexible this thing is. It's remarkable in this day and age. And it is just a, a really cool piece. But who is Advanced Paris? Well, Adva Advanced Paris actually started out as advanced acoustics in 1995 in France, and they manufactured speaker systems. Um, they were successful with their speaker range, and so they decided in 2002 to start entering electronics production, and they brought out their first integrated amplifier in 2004. Well, in 2013, they rebranded themselves as Advanced Paris, and then starting in 2020, just after the pandemic, they went and started to do worldwide distribution of their products, and that's how they wound up in the U.S. So it's not a brand new company, but they are new to the U.S. And they make a full line of product, full line of products, excuse me, uh, big integrated amplifiers. They make streaming uh, amplifiers. They make CD players. They make uh, preamps and power amps, and they still make a line of home audio speakers. Although I don't know if we have them here in the U.S. quite yet. So the XI-75 is a really remarkable piece, as I said. It's rated at 75 watts a channel by 2 into 8 ohms, 110 watts a channel by 2 into 4 ohms. It has a frequency response of 10 hertz to 35,000 hertz. Um, it does have a moving magnet and high output moving coil phono stage. One of the nice things about it, it does have a loudness contour button on it, so that's kind of fun. And it does have a, a really nice built-in DAC that will support 24192. And I want to talk about that real quick. It uses a Wolfson 8740 DAC, and that's a very well-regarded DAC, especially in Europe. Now, Wolfson was a Scottish company that developed these DACs. They've recently been purchased by Cirrus Logic. So if you see Cirrus Logic, there is a chance that it might be a Wolfson design, but typically they're still branding them Wolfson, even though it's Cirrus Logic as a parent company. So what the, the 8470, excuse me, the 8740 does is it uses an AKM AK4113 SPDIF receiver. So it uses an AKM chip inside, but that takes the digital signal in from SPDIF connections, while the Wolfson takes a direct connection, a synchronous connection from the USB input, and you'll see on the back all of that stuff. And so it, the, the, that AKM chip makes sure it reliably receives a very low jitter, very low noise, very high resolution signal from SPDIF, because again, SPDIF has issues with timing and everything else. Remember that the SPDIF, the device sending the signal, it's that clock that determines the timing, not the clock in here, where with USB, it's asynchronous, which means this clock in the receiver takes and sets the timing. And if there's missing information, it can request, because it's bi-directional, it can request the packet be resent so it can be assembled properly. So USB is our best connection. SPDIF is okay. It's been around for a very long time. But anyway, the, the, the idea behind that AK4113 is that it helps. It's very high resolution. It is able to obviously process those SPDIF, which stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface Signals, and process them very, very accurately. So when we get output to the speakers, we're hearing a very accurate, natural digital sound. And the Wolfson 8740, excuse me, doesn't have to work so hard trying to decode that signal. So I'm going to go ahead and pause for just a moment. We're going to spin the unit around. And we're going to take a look at the back, and I think you'll be very, very surprised. So I zoomed in so you can get a better look at things. We obviously has a moving magnet, high, mo high output moving coil, phono input, and I did test it with moving magnet. Uh, it is quite good. And you'll notice it has a dedicated CD input, a tuner input, which you can use as an auxiliary input. It's just a line level input. And it has one, two, three, four 
auxiliary inputs, and then another one called PC2, which again can be used just as a regular standard auxiliary input. So tons of inputs. Above that, there's a five volt, and it's just strictly five volts power. So you could drive, you know, let's say you wanted to put a Weem Pro on it, or Weem Pro Plus, you could drive it off of that. You could take the signal from the Weem Pro and put it in optically into the unit or coaxially and use the internal DAC, which will be better than the Weem DAC. Um, or you can use a PC, your streamer, whatever, for Rune or Artivana through the USB. One of the things I really love about this, though, is it has a main in pre out, which means that if you have a processor, let's say an equalizer, which is exactly what I did, was I ran my shit locus in here so that no matter what input I was on, it could go through the locus EQ and I could EQ any of the inputs. And that makes it super, super convenient. Now, I didn't use the, the locus for evaluating sound, but I'm just telling you how I could use it when I wasn't reviewing and I was listening for pleasure. I did use it that way. It also has what's called an amp in. So basically a home theater bypass and it has a subwoofer output. I don't know if the subwoofer output has any crossover on it, but it doesn't really matter because your subwoofer will have a built-in crossover. And then it's got what's called a high bias switch. Now, high bias means most amplifiers, and this is a class AB amplifier, most class AB amplifiers run in class A, but maybe for a watt or two. And then it goes and in, switches into, into class B. Now at that point, one or two watts is loud enough that we're, it masks that volume, that additional level, volume level, will mask any distortion created by the notch distortion or crossover distortion within a class B amplifier topology. But this one actually has a high bias. So what we do is we take the class A, we keep the unit in class A for much longer. They don't specify exactly how many watts, but if they kept it in class A, maybe up to five or 10 watts, that's all you'd ever need. Beyond that, it would be so loud you'd never hear the class B mode for sure. Really nice high quality speaker binding post, obviously an IEC power socket and then a master power switch. Otherwise, when you use the remote control to power it down, it stays in standby mode. And then it has this little connector here, which I believe is for an optional Bluetooth um, uh, receiver. But anyway, as you can see, just tons of flexibility. And that's one of the things I really loved about this was that flexibility. Just, it's remarkable in a, in a, in a product in this day and age. So we're gonna go ahead and spin it around and take the top off and look inside. Well, before we move on, let's take a good look at the front panel of the Advanced Paris XI-75. It's very, very elegant. Obviously, the French have a great design aesthetic and it carries over onto this product. So right now the unit's in standby. There is a power switch in the back, which I had mentioned before. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of standby mode. Power comes on. A ring illuminates around the volume control, which is a multifunction control. It's hard to see, but there's some subtle labeling on the front panel. Digital, it would be an indicator light for that. Bluetooth, there would be an indicator light for that if you had it installed. USB-A, USB-B, and of course the headphone jack. Um, and I did not try the headphone uh, amplifier, so I don't know how it sounds, but I imagine it probably sounds good. So this button, again, is default volume. But if you push it, it becomes your input selector. So we can go USB-A, USB-B, coax one, coax two, optical, Bluetooth, phono, CD, tuner, auxiliary one, two, three, four. Now to access bass and treble controls, you do have to use the remote control. Now, hopefully I can get this to focus, but bass, treble, the home theater bypass button is here, as well as a dimmer for the uh, display and the loudness button. I misspoke when I said it had a loudness contour button. It doesn't, it's on the remote. So I wasn't completely inaccurate, but if I push and hold that button, then the loudness is on. If I push and hold that button, loudness is off. Same for bass and treble. It's all on a remote control. It's actually kind of convenient because if you think about it, where are you going to be when you want to adjust those things? You're going to be sitting in your chair. You can also choose your speakers A and B here. The unit, the remote control also has some other functions uh, and controls for additional advanced Paris products like their CD player and so forth. So anyway, that's the front panel of the Advanced Paris XI-75. Here we are looking at the inside of the Advanced Paris XI-75 integrated amplifier, and it is beautifully laid out and very, very attractive, very nicely engineered. 
This is the left side of the amplifier. This is the right side. This is the AC power board, the sockets right here. So this just blocks it, but those two boards are mirror images of each other. And the neat thing is they are separated by the entire width of the chassis, so no crosstalk. Um, and kind of almost like a mono sort of output stage. Now, each output stage has two transistors. So it is a traditional push-pull. And again, this uses through-hole te through technology. You've heard me mention that before. And through-hole is the most appropriate way to build an output stage of an amplifier because it can handle more current and it can have better dynamics than surface mount. Now, surface mount's fine. This is the DAC board and all of these components are surface mounted. And this is where the Wolfson 8740 chip and that AK4113 SPDIF receiver chip live. But all of these components are small, little tiny things, and they're placed robotically in place, and they're held down with what's called solder paste. Once the board is populated, it's put into a convection oven, and that melts the solder paste and affixes these permanently to the board. But they don't have to deliver current on here. It's mostly just voltage, so surface mount technology is fine. You'll notice on the big capacitors, obviously, those are all through hole, which is very well thought out and appreciated for sure. It's a really, really nicely laid out unit. Again, hats off to these guys. So that's the inside of the Advanced Paris XI-75 integrated amplifier. Let's put the top back on it. Let's talk about how it sounds. Well, as you can see from looking inside the unit, it is really well engineered, very well thought out, and very well constructed. Um, I'm very impressed with that, especially the through hole uh, component uh, on the PC boards. That's a sign of quality. So hopefully you enjoyed that look inside. And if you enjoyed it, well, I hope you would give me a like and a subscribe. And obviously, if you want to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. And there are membership links in the pin description and in the description of the video itself. So how did I get along with this thing? Well, I'll tell you what, I got along with this thing remarkably well. Um, actually, I'm quite smitten with it. I really... I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna be sorry to see this thing go. I actually took out the Evo 150 out of the main system. It's normally my reference. And I put this in its place for about two weeks. And I did some other evaluations on some DACs and some smaller other equipment. And I used this as the reference amplifier because it's that good. Now, is it the same as the Evo 150? No, but it's, you know, the Evo 150 is $2,000 more expensive. Um, I'd also said at one point in a video that um, I thought the Cambridge AXR100 was the best hi-fi product under $1,000. Well, at $9.95, this one's going to give it a good run for the money. They share some similarities. This has more goes into's and goes out as. I think the AXR100 has a little bit more current, a little more drive to it, but boy, they are close. Um, they're just so close. So when I was using this, I did, I connected it to all the speakers I have in house, the Wharfdale Diamonds, the Wharfdale 225s, which we're visiting, um, the ELAC debut 2.0 F62 floor standards, um, the ELAC DBR62 bookshelves, and my energy reference speakers. And I also used, I also connected my turntable to it using the built-in moving magnet phono preamp. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So I wound up listening most of the time on the big Wharfdales or the DBR62s, and it did an exemplary job with both of those. Um, just amazing. Um, on this recording from Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong, you can tell in the recording, now these are from sessions in 1956 and 1957, and it was far more common in those days for all of the musicians to be in the same studio and recording at the same time, not everybody in their own booth or someone comes in on Monday and someone comes in on Tuesday. And you can get that sense. This gives you that sense of space, of room, of the studio size and space, and does a really, really good job with that. Um, it also renders her voice just beautifully. It renders his horn very, very well. And he, of course, he's got that wonderful gravelly Satchmo voice and you just, you can hear all of the character in it. Just wonderful. So the mid range is quite good. There's not a lot of bass in that. There is some, there is some double bass, obviously, but it's not very prominent, but that's all mostly mid bass, mid range, uh, and just beautifully done. It just did a beautiful job with it. Another one, too, was um, really uh, to get a good sense for kind of male vocals. I played this record from Keb Mo called The Reflection, and it is quite a, a wonderful recording. He's got that wonderful blues voice that sounds like, you know, 100,000 miles on the road and all that stuff. So, so much character and so much nuance in his voice. It's just wonderful. And this did it an 
absolutely wonderful job of rendering all of that. Um, just his guitar sounded great. Everything sounded really, really good. I could find really no shortcomings in the sound quality of this unit, given its price point for sure. Now, to test the moving magnet uh, phono cartridge, I played this recording from Stanley Turrentine, Sugar. Now, this is a very famous CTI or Creed Taylor uh, incorporated recording when Stanley was recording with Creed Taylor. And the interesting thing about this is, again, all the musicians were live in the studio at the same time, but his backup band was Ron Carter, George Benson, and Freddie Hubbard. So some amazing musicians. And again, this is, I think, a 1970 recording. And it just sounded wonderful. The phono preamp is excellent in this. It had good bass. Now, my Audio-Technica cartridge, the AT-VM540ML, has a very good frequency response, and it does very well with bass, but this sounded really, really good. Um, and and it, a good, smooth, natural phono preamp. It didn't sound thin, and it didn't sound like it was... Some phono preamps on the, on the entry-level side of things can sound kind of just phony or kind of like it was a cassette you're listening to. Not with this at all, just beautiful on that side. And then for one that I wanted to explore much more low frequency and kind of more imaging, even though I know it's manufactured in the studio, is this recording from David Arkenstone, who's one of my perennial favorites, uh, Citizen of Time. Now I've li been listening to this since it came out probably in 1990 or 89 or 91, something along that line. So a very, very long time. And I've listened to it thousands of times on literally hundreds of systems and hundreds of different components. And it's a benchmark for me in evaluating the overall sound quality of any component. And this did an ex excellent job. Now, there's a lot of high frequency energy in that. There's kind of kind of choral sounds. I mean, it's a synthesizer, but there's a lot of information up there in the upper treble, excuse me, upper mid-range and in the lower treble. And this did a very good job rendering it. Throughout the whole frequency response, bass was good and tight. Maybe not as much drive as the AXR 100. It might be not quite as, not quite as much current, but it's so close that it almost doesn't matter. And I'm not sure I would care if I had this in my rack every day. Um, but great bass, great mid range. I could find really no flaws. Now through the mid range, very neutral, not warm, but not cool. Um, just very neutral, very natural, very revealing, and very detailed. And as you get up into the upper mids and into the treble and beyond, maybe it is a bit polite, but man, polite might be too strong a word. It might be friendly. It's very detailed. There's great sense of air. I mean, you could hear the studio, uh, you know, uh, uh, definitely with the Stanley Turner recording and the Ellen and Louis, Louis Armstrong recording. Um, so there's great detail, but no stridency, no harshness, no, no, no sibilance, unless the sibilance was in the recording, which was a little bit in the Ella recording. Um, just because she was closer to the mic, I think. But um, this didn't create any sibilance. It gave you what you put into it. It gave you that out. And I think that's a great compliment to it. So I really, really enjoyed it. And I really loved all that goes in is and goes out is. I also kind of like the fact that it's got tone controls and a loudness contour and all the other stuff on it. Um, so just really, really beautiful to look at, beautiful to listen to, uh, very, very rewarding. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a bit smitten with this thing. And I, they're going to have to I, come and take it away from me because I don't think I want to willingly give it up, but I can't afford to buy anything more. So anyway, that's the Advanced Paris XI-75, heartily recommended by me. I really enjoyed it. And if you're interested in finding out about purchasing one, in the video description is a link to our friend Kevin Mall at Skylabs uh, Audio in Des Moines. He is a factory authorized Advanced Paris dealer. And if you're interested in purchasing, you can click on that link and find out more on his website for that. Or you can always give him a call and talk to him about it. But anyway, I just, I really, really enjoyed the, my time with this unit. Well, hopefully you enjoyed your time with me. I would appreciate that. And hopefully you'd be willing to give me a, a like and your subscription. And again, if you want to support the channel, there's a thank you button in the bottom of the window, um, video window. And there are links to join the channel in the pin description and in the video description. In the video description are affiliate links, including the link to Kevin at Skylab's store. There are playlists in there and I'm fleshing those out. Um, I have been a bit remiss because I'm trying to play catch up on videos and things like that. We just had a holiday weekend, so I've been, I kind of didn't film when I should have probably, but I'm trying to get caught up now. Anyway, so there's playlists there. You guys have been great about sending me playlists. They're starting to fill out in the community post. I really appreciate that. I would appreciate your comment. 
Um, I get lots of comments. I love the comments. I respond to the comments. I enjoy that kind of communication we have a, a, a great deal, more than you know. So anyway, that's that. My name's Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel, and I wish you the very best, and I would encourage you to now go listen to some music, maybe on something beautiful and as wonderful sounding as the Paris, Advanced Paris XI-75. Thanks so much. Can't be beat.